I have to eat 86,000 calories of cheese today simply because I need to get 4,000 IUs of vitamin D in. Okay, we've been led to believe that dairy is like the best source of vitamin D and quite frankly, that's neither here nor there, but I wanted to be able to lay that out right at the beginning because vitamin D is so critical, we can't end up being misled with where we should get it. What I wanna talk about in this video is six extremely unconventional things that nobody talks about that vitamin D does within your body. And we're talking big needle movers, okay? We're not talking like little tiny things that are changing your life. We're talking huge impact on your life, but so much of the focus is just on bone health, simply because we're trying to move this dairy agenda, that we forget about all this other stuff. All right, so we're gonna break it all down. Hey, we've got new videos coming out all the time, okay? Almost every single day at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. So please hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. And after you watch this video, go ahead and check out Redmond Real Salt down below in the description, okay? You thought that salt was unhealthy for all this time. Now, I encourage you to check them out because they pave the way when it comes down to salt research, but also showing that not all salt is created equal. So I highly recommend that you check them out. If you're looking for good quality salt, you can get a discount on my salt bundle down below. All right, let's go ahead and get rocking into this really quick. The first thing I just have to address, you probably know basically what vitamin D is, but we'll touch on it for like 30 seconds. Vitamin D is just a hormone that's created in the skin, okay? It comes from sunlight and it gets converted into an active form and then does all kinds of things within the body. We've been led to believe that it only has to do with bone health, but it does a heck of a lot more because vitamin D is actually a hormone that has very powerful processes within the body. In fact, a study that was published in 2011 in nutrition research found that 42% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D. And then another study in 2009 from JAMA found that 77% of Americans at least have insufficient amounts of vitamin D. Now, again, this is without even looking at the big picture of all this other stuff that it does. So we're gonna go ahead and go line by line with what I think are the most unusual things that vitamin D does within your body. Okay, number one, telomere length. First and foremost, telomeres are simply this. When your cells age, your telomeres shorten. I want you to think of it like a shoelace that has a little plastic cap on it. And if that plastic cap wears shorter and shorter and shorter, eventually you end up having a frayed shoelace. Well, this happens at the cellular level and the telomeres are like the shoelace caps, right? So the shoelace caps wear with age. Now, what's interesting is vitamin D actually restores telomere length. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published a study that found that vitamin D improved the telomere length specifically of leukocytes. So we're talking about the immune system. Now this could just be a simple example. It could do this in all kinds of different cells, but in leukocytes, it was pretty interesting. Now, if you are a science nerd, you will know what this means, but basically it improved telomere length by 107 base pairs. What does that mean in layman's terms? What that means is that it increased that telomere life by about five years. Okay, so just by having adequate amounts of vitamin D in the system, we've been able to improve the life of that telomere that protects the DNA of a cell by five years. Why don't they tell us this stuff? I don't understand why they're just pushing this bone health thing when it's such a small portion of what vitamin D does. All right, now let's go ahead and let's move into number two, which is a huge one, and I don't know anyone that isn't concerned with this, your weight. Vitamin D has a huge impact on your weight. There's a study that was published in Diabetes Journal in 2016, and it found that we have a high amount of what are called vitamin D receptors in our paraventricular nucleus, portion of our brain. Okay, now this portion of our brain directly regulates how we handle glucose. Okay, so if we have high blood sugar, a lot of times it's the paraventricular nucleus, portion of the brain that isn't processing it really well. Well, it turns out because we have a high amount of vitamin D receptors in that portion of the brain, when vitamin D levels are up, we process sugar better, we process our blood sugar better. Therefore, we have much less in the way of appetite. So studies have shown, again, including this particular study, that rodents that were even given vitamin D ended up losing weight dramatically simply because their appetite was suppressed. Now, it's easy to measure this in a rodent, but it's been done in humans as well. And I've got some other studies when we start talking about other things too. But the point is, is that there's a direct correlation with how it affects our blood sugar and therefore how much we eat and therefore our weight. Next one we gotta talk about is insulin sensitivity. In my opinion, being someone that has researched the world of low-carb diets for so many years, insulin sensitivity and insulin resistance are the two things that probably affect your weight and your overall health the most, okay? So there were some studies that took a look at how vitamin D affected our actual insulin sensitivity, and this is where your mind's about to get blown. 
So this study was published in the journal Clinical Diabetes, also in 2016. Took a look at 152 patients. Okay, with these 152 patients, they divided them into groups, and one group ended up getting 100,000 IUs of vitamin D over the course of two weeks. That sounds like a bunch, but when you actually break it down, it's not a whole, whole lot. Okay, now, then they had another group go as a control setting. Here's what they found out. Okay, when they took a look at these patients who were obese, by the way, they found that at the beginning, they had about 82% being insulin resistant. So of the group that started the study, they had 82% of those people being insulin resistant. The group that took vitamin D, they found that that number shrunk down to 18%. So in essence, 82% of the people started with insulin resistance. If they took vitamin D, that number went down to 18% of people. So insulin resistance went way, 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 way down, meaning the cells were now able to utilize blood sugar better and things were simply working. Now, another thing to add is that the group that took vitamin D also lost four times as much weight. I think that's important to mention too, right? All right, now we have to talk about mood. Okay, no one wants to talk about the mood because it's just too ambiguous. It's too, neuroscience is just too complicated. Well, there's a study that was published in the International Journal of Preventative Medicine that took a look at 51 women who are suffering from anxiety and depression, and it put them on just a small amount of vitamin D. In this case, they took 3,500 IUs of vitamin D just for four months, and they found after four months, there was a tremendous reduction in anxiety symptoms and depression symptoms, with some people even claiming that they had no symptoms whatsoever. That's four months of vitamin D. Okay, now how this is working at a hormonal level, we don't really know. All we do know is we have multiple vitamin D receptors within different portions of our brain, and it very well could be helping out, of course, the glucose tolerance, which could play an effect, insulin sensitivity, which could play an effect, but it could have a direct effect on the brain as well. Okay, then we have the gut health side of things. Now, it's important for me to note, I shouldn't stretch anything here, okay? The world of gut health is big. We don't know a whole lot of what's going on there. There's so many different moving pieces. But the early science is starting to show that vitamin D plays a pretty important role. And we see this link simply because inflammatory bowel diseases, things like ulcerative colitis, things like that, symptoms improve with those conditions in people that have gut dysbiosis, so they have microbiome dysbiosis, issues with their gut microbiome, they improve when they give these particular patients vitamin D, proving that somewhere along the lines, we're having some effect on the gut microbiome. So somewhere along the lines, things are getting fixed. We just don't know how or why. It could be the fact that we're binding to different receptors and it's killing off certain bacteria. We don't really know. But if you have a gut issue and you're trying to regulate your gut microbiome, it certainly isn't going to hurt to take vitamin D. Okay, now the big one. Okay, this is the one that I honestly think everyone needs to hear about because it is everything. This is about your genes and inflammation in the immune system. And I say genes, I mean G-E-N-E-S, but it also is gonna affect your genes, as in your J-E-A-N-S, all right? Because inflammation can make you gain weight. So let's go ahead and talk about this for a second. Vitamin D plays a big role in modulating inflammation, okay? It modulates what's called tumor necrosis factor one alpha and interleukin one and interleukin six, it modulates a bunch, okay? But there's some specific studies that we have to look at that really make some sense of all this. See, it's the Journal of Immunology, which is a pretty big journal that found all this stuff out about vitamin D. And I'm gonna break it down into layman's terms of what's going on here, because it's pretty complicated when you start looking at DNA and just our genetics, okay? Basically what happens is vitamin D comes on in and it binds to its vitamin D receptor. All right, then that vitamin D receptor migrates into the cell, into the nucleus of a cell, and actually hits what is called the response element within the DNA, okay? And this triggers the DNA to sort of unravel, okay? To go through a deacetylase process, okay? So deacetylation. What happens is our DNA is our blueprint, right? So you know that our DNA is sort of what programs us to be built a certain way. So literally it's like a blueprint and it's rolled up into a tube really, really tight, those winds of DNA when you see a picture of DNA, right? It's rolled up into a blueprint tube, and it's really hard to undo that tube to be able to view the blueprint. So it needs to get acted upon by something. In this particular case, in the case of leukocytes, in the case of the immune system, vitamin D activates that, and it makes it so that the blueprint unwinds. And when the blueprint unwinds, that is gene expression. So now the body has the blueprint to create more of the proper immune cells. So we just boosted our immune system and reduced inflammation tremendously, like tremendously, simply by adding vitamin D into the mix. Okay, this is tremendous. This is like a huge, huge movement and you don't, you don't always see it because the immune system and genetics are so crazy. But what's wild is that we have another process that occurs when you're in ketosis that actually compounds this in a positive way. 
Okay, it's called histone deacetylase. Okay, and we need to break down that DNA so that it can actually be read. It turns out that ketones do that too. So being in ketosis in conjunction with vitamin D could just be one of the most powerful ways to boost your immune system. Pretty wild stuff. Now let's cut to the chase really quick. How much vitamin D do you actually need and where should you get it? Okay, because I want to be able to give you the science but also give you the practical stuff. Okay, the point is, you're not gonna show that you're low vitamin D unless you're less than 20 nanograms per deciliter on a blood test. So if you go to the doctor, you're probably not even gonna register low vitamin D unless you're really low. Quite frankly, we should be between 40 nanograms per deciliter and 60 nanograms per deciliter. Between 40 and 60. You should get yourself somewhere in there. Now, studies show that you can go more, but I think that's a sweet spot, okay? So there's a simple formula to identify how much vitamin D you should take or be consuming in order to get your levels up. What you do is you take your baseline. You gotta identify where your baseline is. So let's say hypothetically, my baseline after some blood work is 20 nanograms per deciliter. I'm low, I'm at 20. Well, what I'd wanna do is I'd wanna take what my target, my goal vitamin D level is. In this case, let's say 40 to make it simple. I'd say 40 is my goal. So I take 40 and then I subtract my baseline which is 20. So that leaves me with 20. 40 minus 20 equals 20. Okay, I take that 20 and I divide it by five. Okay, that leaves me with four. And then I lastly, I multiply that number by 1,000. Four times 1,000 is 4,000. Answer, I should take 4,000 IUs per day to get my levels up to normal. That way I didn't take too much. <laughs> I just totally went British. That way I don't take too much but I'm also taking enough to get the job done. Okay, so just to recap that, your goal, subtract your baseline, divided by five, multiplied by a thousand. It's really simple. And the best sources to get them are gonna be from fatty fish, okay, gonna be from things like sardines and things like that where you actually eat the bone too. I know that sounds gross, but otherwise just get fish in general. Okay, fish is going to be one of the best sources of vitamin D. Mushrooms are good, but mushrooms are vitamin D2 and it needs to be converted into active form of D3. So it's one step between you and really the, the ultimate goal. Uh, vitamin D supplementation is okay. Just know that it's a synthetic form and it's not gonna be as good as the real thing. But a hot tip is you wanna make sure that you're taking vitamin K2, MK7 with it. What that's gonna do is it's gonna allow the vitamin D to get shuttled where it needs to go. So that way calcium actually goes where it needs to go and you don't end up with calcification in the arteries and develop plaque. So anyway, you don't have to go eat 86,000 calories worth of cheese. You eat a little bit of fish or take proper supplementation. And trust me, the benefits are gonna far outweigh any potential gross taste of eating some fish now and then. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.